The Nirak Chiling uncharted stretch of approximately 6 kilometers that the Border Roads Organization is drilling through the Zanskar range is all that's left to complete the strategic Nimu Padam Darcha road in Ladakh. We documented our travel on the road to Nirak dead end in part 3 and 4. In the Himalayan frontier part 5, we travel to the other side, to Chiring, on the frozen Zanskar River Chadar Trail from Leh to interview Lieutenant General Raghu Srinivasan, the DG BRO. We are on the Chadar Trail over the frozen Zanskar, which at one point used to be the only means of travel in this harsh winter conditions. In fact, it's uh, currently minus uh, 12 here. We are about 70 kilometers from Leh in a place uh, called Chilling, and we won't really be doing the traditional 80 kilometer trek, but we are extremely privileged to have with us Lieutenant General Raghu Srinivasan, the Director General of Water Roads. Thank you so much for facilitating this absolutely brilliant coming here. I mean, we've covered this area till Nirak and now to come chilling. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Amitabh, and uh, great to be on your show. Uh, it's a bright, uh, sunny morning in uh, Ladakh. And like you say, uh, the weather is just right. Very yeah. crisp. <laughs> Very crisp. Very. Uh, this place itself has such historical significance if we go back, sir, in terms of, you know, the Silk Route. If you would like to just elaborate for our viewers. Yes, uh, this did form a very important part of the Silk Route. Uh, I would say this was the most difficult part of the Silk Route. Uh, once uh, they moved westward uh, from uh, across the mountains, they had to get across the passes. And these are the same passes that we are uh, negotiating today. The first place that they entered was uh, a pass called Sasala. And uh, just short of that, there's an interesting location called Morgo. Morgo in the local language means land of the dead. And uh, their camels, their caravans, they would be... Even now, when we are constructing over here, we uh, encounter as we go ancient bones, something of uh, the past relics which we, uh, you know, have excavated. So this is living history. Uh, getting over these uh, very difficult and if you read the travelogues of those times they talk about getting across uh, Eastern and Western Ladakh and then joining on going further westward into the braided routes which formed the Silk Route and uh, coming to the Silk Route uh, Making a road is a measure of a nation's sovereignty. It exercises command control and it says that these are my people. Uh, going back again, like you brought up history, uh, the Uttarpath, which uh, was constructed first in the 3rd century BC, began in Bengal. It went through, followed the Gangetic Plain, went through Punjab and then headed northwards to Central Asia. This later on became the Grand Trunk Road. This is the first alignment of the Grand Trunk Road. And simultaneously, in the 3rd century BC, we had the Dakshin Path, which uh, originated somewhere in Varanasi and uh, then reached Ujjain, then goes to Maharashtra uh, in a place called Pethan. And further south, it begins go going along the coast. So at that time, we had an idea of India. And that is our idea of India, that this is our road connectivity which we establish. And again, General, this Ladakh and this area has uh, a lot of historical connect with the Border Roads Organization and now you have a completely enlarged footprint. That's here. right, that's right. I think uh, the first, very first project that we had uh, was uh, Project Beacon and this is 1960. Nothing is over here. And their first challenge was to get across the Changla which is our route to go onwards to Tangse. And the motto of uh, Beacon at that time was Beacon Bole Changla. We lost so many men uh, making that, but we did it. And I think that is the historical connect that we had, that the dedication and the perseverance that we showed 
to do it at that time with the machinery we had in those days, with the technology which we had in those days, laid the foundation for what we now have as a surge in the entire western and eastern Ladakh. Uh, we have now a total of four projects which are uh, working along both along the river valleys and uh, working towards inter-valley connectivity. Exactly the pace that uh, you've developed in, 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 in Ladakh specifically and the sustained push on, on, on two prongs, you know, uh, the strategic military aspect and civilian developmental connectivity. Undoubtedly, Amitabh, I think we owe a lot to it, to the government impetus which has, uh, over the last five or six years, has been to a surge in what we are planning to do and are doing in uh, Ladakh. Uh, the amount of uh, projects which are being planned at the national and at the Union Territory uh, level, the amount of funding which is provided, the way that projects are being cleared, all of it is phenomenal. We've not seen anything like it. And uh, when you come to the projects that we have at hand, there is, a, uh, uh, there is an old saying that you ask a mountaineer, why, do he, why does he need to climb a mountain? Because and he asks there. you only, why not? So when we, when we look at roads, we say, why not today? We have the technology, we have the resources, we have the will, and we have the backing. So uh, there is a great deal which will happen in Ladakh. Uh, a road, to my mind, is like a tree. You plant one and the forest develops. These roads will develop tourism. They will bring in education. They will start the process of reverse migration. We will have so much development activity in terms of schools, hospitals, medical facilities, money uh, flowing in. We just have to build the road and then you see the development. You can see it today when you come to Leh. Anyone who came to Leh about five years ago and he sees Leh today, he sees a sea change, he sees a metropolis. <laughs> It, it undoubtedly the, the border roads organization is is doing a lot but it it can't do it on its own uh, in sense of there is close coordination between the bro the indian army and the air forces especially in this region i would also add uh, uh, the government which is over here and uh, let me assure you that after certain time the tourists go home <laughs> and the happy times that you see in ladakh are over it's just a frozen, barren desert. And here we survive by being friends. And I must say that we get uh, more uh, cooperation. We just need to ask. And the Army, uh, the Air Force, we, we have so much support from them. And I don't think we could have achieved any of what we achieve without that. When we talk about uh, coordination, sir, uh, how does it work between the Army and, and, and the BRO in terms of how do you identify routes, roads, uh, what is needed? I think, I think and uh, rightly so, the Army plays lead. They are the people who, have, uh, who rightly decide uh, what roads are necessary, what are the strategic roads which need to come up. And this is not only for the Army, for other, uh, this works for other border guarding forces as well. So, that done, after that, connecting uh, these uh, locations, uh, which we would call as obligatory points, that is point A, B, C, is our job. And that's the way that we try to technically uh, uh, see that our road alignments facilitate uh, not only uh, what needs to be done for the army, but uh, all roads are dual nature. So uh, their use has to be also planned in terms of how uh, the uh, locals, how the uh, uh, tourists, how the civilians, uh, they will uh, use their roads. Today, hardly any roads are, um, uh, they, I would count just a few, which would be purely strategic in nature, which have only, uh, at least most part of the road, I would imagine, uh, would, is being used uh, to a great extent by all of us. And if you could give us examples of uh how the Air Force is involved in, in coordination? I mean, they must be playing such a huge part. Uh, I mean, I, I, I wonder if you could uh, pan uh, to the uh, rocks around you. Now, here is a classic example of uh, uh, how you are going to achieve connectivity. Now, you would imagine that you would start with two 
attack points let's say to my right and to my left but we have locations uh, in in the valleys and in the alignments where we have where we could start a third attack point that means we bring the machinery and we place it over there and it increases the pace at which we uh, construct and i think uh, that is uh, one of the extreme challenges of bringing our very heavy machinery under slung they bring it over here and they offload and uh, give us a further attack point and then of course sustenance uh, i hardly need to tell you that we, uh, in a place like ladakh we are totally uh, in most many places we are air maintained and that's where the air force comes in and helps us out so this is the interesting part where we are this is <laughs> chilling and we have shot on the other side what you are trying to do is like you were pointing out two attack points join uh, the roads there so we could probably sit and that's at <coughs> some point of time this is going to be connected right yes uh, no, no, not some point of time hopefully sooner than rather than later <laughs> Janesh Basan when we look at our side and the dif difference in topography here you know up and down zigzag vis-a-vis -vis what's happening on the other side when it's a flat top it's a tibetan plateau if you would like to enlighten our viewers on you know how difficult it is on this side uh, well i'll start by the uh, tibetan plateau uh that's generally in the range of about uh, 12000 to 14000 feet and it's a flat table top there are no mountain ranges so you have uh whatever you are constructing is constructing on a flat piece of ground that's number 1 number 2 the mountains are the watershed that means that whatever snow or whatever uh moisture is going to come is going to stop in our portion and tibet really is a flat barren cold desert for anyone who constructs road moisture or water is a great enemy and that's what uh, we need to work on and uh, see that uh, we have uh, ways by which we have adequate drainage so whatever roads we construct uh, are not washed away that's one and then starting from the south uh, you have the great himalayan range you have the ladakh range you have the karakorams you have the zanskar and you have the kunlun there are a series of ranges uh, all of them are not exactly uh, 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 very uh, permanent mountains we have a very fragile uh, mountain base there are young mountains in terms of the himalayas and these are landslide prone uh, with moisture they become avalanche prone and uh, naturally you keep ascending and you keep gaining uh, height and then you keep descending and losing height so that's where uh, what you talk about you know the zigs and the zags yeah. that we have in each of these is essentially to get over a series of mountain ranges which we have over Uh, an expanse of the uh, of ladakh which is approximately 60000 square kilometers and that's where essentially the challenge lies uh, uh, across i i would say it is uh, comparatively easier without the moisture and without the mountains which they have to encounter and just picking up from one of the points you are making connectivity itself cutting through these rocks like if the strata is so difficult that is one challenge in itself and we'll talk about that maybe in a larger context a little later but once that is done maintaining that connectivity in this kind of uh, terrain altitude weather that itself also is a big challenge isn't it uh, absolutely i mean uh, you, uh, you you brought it out uh, exactly we go down uh, to below minus 20 degrees centigrade we go up so you have uh, uh, thermal variations which are going to uh, crack up even rocks so any road is going to uh, have that uh, uh, issue with it uh, the technical challenges are uh, immense but uh, the happy part is uh, today we have uh, both the technology we have the technical acumen in the term of our uh, uh, trained manpower uh, we have the perseverance and the will to be able to make uh, better roads 
I think one of the large strengths of the border roads is that uh, we have evolved. Right from the 1960s, we have been constructing roads. And every road we construct, we go back to the drawing board, we draw lessons, we made some mistakes, we are not going to make those mistakes again. We, we made a road, some part of the road came down, some part of the road, the alignment wasn't the way that we needed it to be. Some places the slopes weren't uh, the way that we needed, some, some places we could have planned a bridge. And each one of those things, with each successive year, we become better, we rectify the mistakes that we have made, and we don't make the mistakes that we, uh, it's a process, that, uh, you know, in anything that we are doing. Road connectivity anywhere is critical, General, but in an inhospitable terrain like this, it's even more critical. Yes, you're right. I think uh, 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 the army would have brought out very succinctly and uh, very cogently uh, how, uh, 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 what great strategic importance uh, uh, this entire uh, sector is. That is, if we view uh, Ladakh in uh, uh, what it means to our strategic defense. Uh, in this, the gamut of connectivity and especially road connectivity, when, when you have to consider that you're going to have uh, a large number of bad uh, weather days, then essentially all uh, movement is going to be by road. And uh, uh, that needs to be uh, developed. And like I brought out earlier, we earlier were looking at uh, just uh, one um, axis. I would say that uh, we would say the Zojila axis that we would say that we start from Srinagar, cross the Zojila Pass and come down to Leh. Now we're looking at three. You have the Nimu, Padam, Darcha, uh, which is going to pass over the Shinkunla Pass and that will be uh, coming up simultaneously uh, with the uh, tunnels which are coming up over the Manali, uh, Rotang. We already have the Atal Tunnel, but uh, onwards, Shinkula. getting to Leh, we have two important passes. Uh, both uh, Taglangla and Lachulungla and uh, there are projects in the pipeline so that this is. So it's, it's not just uh, one uh, way by which we are connecting uh, this very uh, strategic uh, location. Uh, it is uh, a basket of options that, that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like we say, uh, the road is going to be used. And uh, like we have arteries, uh, the, the, the blood of commerce, uh, the blood of uh, human population, uh, the blood of uh, education, uh, development, all is going to uh, flow into these, uh, we call them challenging areas today, but uh, we see great opportunity uh, coming through the roads that we construct. Since you're saying challenges, General Sivasan, immense, but finding those solutions to those challenges, I mean, first, if you could delineate the challenges itself in a little more detail and then finding the solutions must be so immensely you must be feeling proud as an organization to you know overcome those challenges i think uh, uh, i'll answer the last part first uh, the immense sense of uh, pride and uh, uh, with great humility a lot of satisfaction uh, that one gets to be part of the border roads organization uh, the kind of dedication the kind of technical acumen uh, the kind of perseverance uh, this organization has shown uh, in extremely uh, challenging areas uh, is beyond measure. Uh, most of our workforce, I, I would say upwards of 90% of the workforce are always, always in difficult areas to greater than difficult areas. And they're living in high altitudes, they're in the east, they're living in uh, uh, jungle terrain. Uh, and uh, uh, it, these are difficult places for a workforce to work. Uh, we have an inbuilt strength in the sense that we are possibly the only construction agency uh, which has the ability to construct roads departmentally. When I say that, I mean that we hold the equipment, we have the engineers and the subordinate staff to make the alignment, carry out the design and then uh, execute the project intrinsically we don't need to go for contracts but then uh, we 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 do uh, we do it in in a way that uh, uh, the best uh, shoe fits the, the size uh, in the sense that where uh, if no other person is able to work we are able to work departmentally that gives us a great degree of strength 
and otherwise we are able to execute contracts like any other uh, road construction agency. Yes, but it uh, requires a great degree of understanding, uh, institutional memory. Uh, we have uh, people who have repeatedly been for long tenures over here. Um, if I may, I would say that when we clean, uh, when we clear the uh, axis, uh, the snow uh, on this uh, very axis that is uh, starting from Srinagar to Zojila and onwards uh, going to Leh, uh, while we're clearing the snow, you just see a field of snow. So you don't know where the snow ends, uh, where the road ends and you're now falling into uh, just a snow gap. Uh, and so the first machines which go have our uh, manpower which year on year walk and uh, somehow they develop this uh, ability which is uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, spiritual uh, that they're able to know the exact alignment and walk in front of the leading machine to clear the snow and uh, that's what we do. And the challenge is just where we are sitting in general, I mean you look these near vertical V-shaped slopes, narrow gorges, a river, I mean, you have to, uh, not the Chadar Trail, but you will use the river to move your machinery, to find attack points. I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely yeah, incredible. I, I think you're right. Uh, while the tourists uh, uh, will be walking uh, the Chadar Trail because the river is uh, frozen, uh, we use it so to generate, uh, uh, like I brought out earlier, uh, another attack point. We are going to get our machinery off. They're going to uh, leg it across uh, the ice and uh, find a position where uh, they can get across. But yes, uh, 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 we, uh, it's hazardous. Uh, it is uh, extremely hazardous terrain uh, where we work. Uh, these climates and uh, the terrain conditions, they are extremely demanding. Uh, despite our best efforts, uh, we have uh, a, a large number of uh, accidents uh, which do take place uh, and uh, um, uh, I, I must say that uh, whenever we've had a casualty, uh, our uh, uh, Air Force has always been on call, whether it is uh, day or night. Uh, we've been able to evacuate uh, casualties, given them uh, medical attention. Uh, but yes, it's uh, not easy. We, we are here on the chilling Nirak uh, crossing, which you're saying will happen sooner than uh, later, and then the access will be built. But if you would like to highlight some of the critical uh, infrastructure projects in Ladakh? Oh, there are so many. Yeah, exactly. uh, but uh, I mean, the ones which uh, I would like to recount, uh, we have the uh, Darbuk uh, Shok uh, Dolat Boy Bay Goldie connectivity, uh, which is just short of the Karakoram Pass, uh, which, which, which again it has a huge significance. And then uh, we constructed uh, the track from uh, uh, Chimshule to Jemchok, which went over uh, the Umlingla. And that's the highest uh, motorable road in the world, which the BRO constructed at 19,000 feet. Um, and then uh, you have uh, the intervalley uh, connectivity uh, that we are looking for uh, connecting uh, the Zanskar to the Indus when we go from uh, Hindenbrook uh, to Zungpal. And uh, as you brought out uh, uh, to the south, uh, as we uh, start from uh, uh, Manali, the Rotang, now we are giving another option where we uh, have a tunnel through Shinkunla, then we cross, we get into Padam, which is already a very hot uh, tourist destination, and from Padam uh, we connect uh, behind us, and uh, through here we will uh, join up to Nimu, and Nimu joins up to Leh. So, um, these are some of the fascinating uh, projects and then there are so many uh, of them uh, in this uh, 60,000 square kilometers uh, where work uh, simultaneously is going on. And we'd hope to come and cover more of them. Uh, since you use the word fascinating, I want to bring out an aspect that uh, probably our viewers would not know about, which is your knowledge of the area, which has been focused into at least one of those books, but I know the uh, other one has an uh, Afghanistan angle, which again I'm very, <laughs> you know, interested in. But how do you manage to find time for that? And can you tell us a little bit more about uh, these two books that you've written? Okay, so uh, uh, this uh, gives me an opportunity as an author, which uh, I will not deny, uh, to talk about my books. Uh, well, uh, 
uh, you spend time in these areas and uh, it uh, begins to work on you and uh, not only do the mountains uh, begin to fascinate you uh, but the people and the myths and the folklore so the first book which i wrote which got published in 2014 is uh, the avatari which talks about uh, uh, an adventure where they find shambhala which as you know um, in tibetan folklore it actually exists it's a place of eternal life uh, which was uh, first uh, uh, brought to western knowledge uh, by the lost horizons somewhere in the 1930s so that i uh, took up the fact that shambhala possibly exists and uh, uh, to most of the people who live over here, whether in the spiritual plane or in the physical plane, it actually exists. So the story uh, runs through uh, these mountains and perhaps somewhere beyond these mountains, uh, they, uh, a very uh, interpret band of uh, adventurers, they actually find Shambhala. So that's actually the first book. And the second book, uh, Shyanki, which got published uh, in 2020, uh, does borrow uh, from the fact that uh, there is a, a lot of belief uh, that uh, the gods, uh, they reside uh, in these mountains and they should not be disturbed. And uh, if they are disturbed, then uh, uh, it, it, it is not good uh, for uh, the people over here. And I must uh, uh, tell you here that uh, uh, the army, other people, the border rows, anyone who lives over here uh, gets spiritually imbued. I mean, we form part of uh, this mythology and then as you go across you'll see so many uh, small little uh, monuments to the gods uh, temples which are made uh, where we pay obeisance because anyone who lives in the mountains uh, knows uh, their power uh, knows their magnificence and knows also that life and death uh, is a close call General Raghur Srinivasan more part you sir your organization Thank you for giving us this opportunity, an absolute privilege. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Amita. Look forward to being with you again. Thanks, sir. And to all our viewers, uh, do send us feedback of uh, these reports that we are bringing you, ground reports from uh, Ladakh. You can uh, follow all our social media handles for the latest that we put up, follow our Telegram channel and other social media handles for the latest that we put up either on our website or interviews like this with the DG uh, Border Road, Lieutenant General Raghu Srinivasan. With Rohit Pandita in Chilling in Ladakh, this is Amitabh Revi for Strat News Global. After documenting the BRO's work on the NPD road, we shift our attention to the Indian Air Force Station in Leh as our series records how the Indian military's women Men and machines are honing their all-weather readiness during another winter against the two-front threat from China and Pakistan. <laughs>